Hi everyone, it's very good to be with you today and I pray that you're keeping well. By way of introduction to our new new week of midweek devotions, let me tell you about the Essentials course that we're running on a Tuesday evening. Last week we thought there about the Bible's claim that Jesus is the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. And one implication of that being that if Jesus really is the Son of God, then that is a strong reason for us to pay attention to his words. And so with that in mind, I thought it would be good for us to give attention to some of Jesus' most, most famous words from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. We often call these the Beatitudes, uh, which basically means they're proclamations of blessedness. And so Jesus, the Son of God, has come to reveal God to us. And here in the Beatitudes, he begins proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom to us. Now, what would you expect him to say at that point? Perhaps you'd expect some instructions on how to live in a way that impresses God. Perhaps you'd expect instructions on what religious activities you should be involved with, that you should be doing. But actually, the first thing Jesus says about God's kingdom is pretty surprising. I have a read of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. It says, Jesus began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is for those who know their spiritual failures. Those who know they've stuffed things up with God. Those who feel spiritually weak. Who even struggle to trust God. Let alone try and impress him. Those who are spiritually unworthy. Spiritually bankrupt if you like the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are poor in spirit poor as in if they had a bank account of spiritual wealth the balance would be zero maybe even in the negative the piggy bank of spiritual worthiness is empty he's talking about those who probably for various reasons, have been spiritually humbled. You see, Jesus' kingdom is an upside-down kind of kingdom. It doesn't weigh the work, work the way that we'd expect it to work. We might think Jesus has come for those who look spiritually impressive, uh, that he's come for those who outwardly look spiritually strong. Uh, perhaps for those who feel they're worthy because of their spiritual activity. Now we might look at people who seem to have it all sorted, spiritually speaking, and, and think that Jesus has come for them. But those who think they've got it sorted actually exclude themselves from God's kingdom. You see, the first thing Jesus wants us to know about his kingdom is who it's for. And there is the surprise. It's not for those who think they're spiritually impressive. It's not for those who think they're spiritually good enough. It's for people who don't feel like they're worth including in the kingdom. And that's why it's such good news. Because Jesus has come for those who struggle spiritually. You may have doubts and questions. You may even struggle to enter a church building. You may be conscious of your lifestyle and think that you've no place with Jesus. You may be ashamed of some of the things that you've done or some of the habits that you have. You may be thinking... I've been stuck in isolation for weeks and I've hardly even prayed or opened my Bible. You may not have a Bible uh, or even have a clue how to start going about praying. But if you are spiritually humble, then that is good news. 
because Jesus has come for people just like you. Because when we start from a place of spiritual humility, all we can do is begin to entrust ourselves to the King. And that is right where Jesus wants us to depend on him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son. Thank you that he has not come for those who feel impressive, but for those who know they are weak, who know they struggle, who know they cannot please you. Lord, help us to see our need and to be humbled spiritually before you and to depend on the Lord Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, I do hope to catch up with you again tomorrow.